touch it You know you want it You wanna touch it You know you want it You wanna touch it You wanna take it Director of Waxwork, Waxwork 2, Lost in Time. We burned that place down to the ground. Nothing could have escaped that inferno. I just hope you're right. When the mayhem ended... You said it was over! You said it was over! Their adventure began. You're going to need all the help you can get if you want to continue the fight against evil. Just follow Alice through the looking glass. Trapped in a terrifying journey through time. When you first used Solomon's Locket, you opened a doorway to another universe, a place where the true battle between good and evil is played out for eternity. Caught between the forces of darkness and light. God wants me to be a time warrior? The master is no mortal. He is the devil himself. No. To get back to the future, they must fight evil throughout the ages. You guys know how to fight? Zach Gallagher from Waxwork and Gremlins 1 and 2 stars with Alexander Goodenough from Witness and Die Hard. You're... you're sick. What? Take an action-packed journey through the looking glass and back in time. Waxwork 2, Lost in Time, from Live Home Video. I'm going to rent that next weekend, I think. Yeah. I think maybe we should rent it and hang out with some people and talk about it. Yeah, some people yeah. do people. My wife will be on the show yes. next week. She picked two movies for next week. And uh, they are Wax, Waxwork 2 and the TV movie Blackout. So uh, come on back next week and uh, watch those with us. And Becca is already doing research, she said. And she is excited about it, she told me today. So it will be a birthday celebration week for her. That she has to pick movies for the show. So. So wait a minute. You said mm -hmm. Blackout, the TV movie. 
Yes. But um it's black it's from 1985, right? Yes. Because there's so many uh, I, I mean I clicked on the link you sent me and I was yeah. confused about what what uh blackout there was. There's like two or three different movies with that yeah. title. So Yeah. It's the one that the cover is really famous where it has the guy with like the black gimp mask on the cover. That's the Yeah, black. I thought that was the other one. I'm confused. I can't wait to watch it now and see what what movie it really is. <laughs> it's actually not to spoil stuff we'll learn next week, but a real murder was inspired by the movie uh, because the killer uses a. Uh... Yeah, there's two Carradines in it too. Yeah, it's a Carradine mm -hmm. movie. So, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, Blackout that was on HBO. That's the one we'll be watching next week. Oh, it was an HBO movie. Yeah. Okay. Now it's starting to come a little bit more into focus. But it was a big VHS release too, though. It was a. Uh, uh, a lot of big rental favorite too. So yeah, it, it'll be fun. So that's next out. weekend. That's next um, weekend. And and then we're going to be taking a short uh, mid season break after that. We'll be off uh, the 20th. The next weekend is the drive-in and it'll be off the weekend after that. And then we'll be back the second week in May. We're going away, but just for a few weeks. Yeah. Recharge Not our batteries. Long. Yeah. And then come back. But if you're going to the drive-in, we aren't really going away. So you could like get this experience in person. <laughs> um and uh even more uh drinking in person and me yeah. making all, jokes. All you have to time. do is just come to Vandergrift PA. Hang out with us at the Riverside Drive In at the April Ghouls Monsterama. Two yeah. nights, eight films, no stopping us. Nope. First night, Return of the Living Dead, Messiah of Evil, The Children, and Death Dream. Oh. Uh, second night, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, uh, Galaxy of Terror, Star Crash. And escape from New York. Yeah. What a lineup. I got it right this time. You did. I am very excited about Star Crash and Escape from New York. Those are probably the two I'm most excited about. No, you're not. I love both those movies. I you don't Star like Crash. those movies. No, I don't. I don't like any of them. So, but yeah, and uh, hopefully we say to every year we're going to film some stuff. This year we're going to stick to it. We're going to actually film some stuff and, and share it. So that's a. A promise to be broken, but we will do it. We'll do it or not do it. <laughs> you know what? Stuff's going to get filmed this year because Mike Justice is going to be there. Yeah, exactly. Right, Mike Justice? He's a director, so he should chat. be filming some stuff. Absolutely, it, it, Roger Braden. Yeah. So We have a lot of folks uh, coming this time, so uh, it'll it should be fun. Mike says he'll be the cinematographer, so that'll be cool. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, we would love to do a live remote, Vince, but I don't think we could do it because um, there's really no signal. There's not a great signal out there for your wireless, at least my wireless. <laughs> there are the Starlink satellites out there, as Bill and I learned last time, which freaked us out. We thought we were getting invaded. We thought it had finally come... The moment we were going to meet an alien race was right there at the drive-in, but no. First contact was, was there in Vandergrift, but no. It was just more corporate bullshit. Now it's invading our outer limits. Oh, they had control of the horizontal and the vertical, as they say. So what did you think of Curse of the Black Widow? I'm dying. I loved, I loved it. Um, I loved that it. it it is a monster movie, but just in the same way, it is a uh, a gumshoe movie, like almost like it has some more yeah. elements. And I dig that. I want to see another movie with our detective and flaps in another movie together, like because I liked the um, interplay between them, and like it'd be cool if they had done more with them than just this. Uh, I my I wonder favorite... if they had hoped that because obviously yeah. the Night Stalker became a short-lived series so yeah and then he tried to do that with the norless tapes too and uh 
Right. I would have kind of dug seeing these characters again. Um, if I didn't, I like the title that it has instead of the other title because were I led to believe this was just a gumshoe movie and that spider showed up, I would have been like, what? Um, but uh, yeah, I like Delighted. it. I, I, yeah, and I love that uh, the uh, all women that are spiders have like uh, a happy trail of uh, the uh, the Black Widow mark. Uh, the only the girls have it. Yeah, the one. Luckily, yeah, I, I saw someone post it. Like it was a little, little weird having it being on a preteen girl's stomach. That was a little weird. But the other one was like, oh, that was a little racy for TV when we saw the other one when when we first saw the symbol. Also, that it was throbbing, uh, and like kind of pushing out of her stomach. That was pretty intense. That was creepy. Yeah. Plus, it was creepy on another level because they would have had to have run something up underneath her panties, yeah, to make that effect happen. Yeah, not to mention like glued an appliance right yeah. on her pube line. Oh, also, uh, Donna Mills was like, "Mom, you're alive. I thought you were dead. Well, not for long." Flaps has the best line. He's like, "He's like, she was, wasn't she dead?" He goes, "Well, she is now. She is now. <laughs> yeah." After they find her, after she all over reads herself out that window, uh, but uh, but imagine being her in that moment. Like oh. she, she's thought that her mother has been dead for years since she was a child. Yeah, I think it was. I don't remember what year the mother was supposed to have died, but she supposedly moved to Rome and then died. Yeah, but you know, really, she was just living up in the attic. And she had a nervous breakdown ever since she realized that her one of her daughters was trans species. And she also, saw it happen right it's before. It's kind her of eyes. a werewolf movie that you can only turn into a spider during the full moon. That's what I like. It's like, you know what? There's no existing were spider uh, mythology. So Dan Curtis was like, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, that's it is what it is. Make it some Native American bullshit and write yeah, it in there. Exactly. That's funny what it said. Yeah, like what? I don't what, know. He's like, what kills a spider? Hmm, how about fire? And man, when you set fire to a spider's house, it blows up real good. Like it, uh, it really does. Like it's, it's ready to go. Yeah. What the hell happened? Well, it was an old house. Yeah. The boat house. Yeah. So, you know, look at those those skeletons must have been 2,000 years old. Oh. It looked like the grotto in, in City of the Living Dead. <laughs> yeah, go it did. In there. <laughs> oh. It really but, uh, did. It, it kind of reminded me of that. I love the cobweb. Has... Remember he finds Lee in the cobweb and he runs over and pulls it out like uh, when Ripley finds nude in Aliens. <laughs> yeah. There's some good production quality in this for a TV movie. It looks nice. Like, uh, there are some nice shots in it. And uh, the only, I think, thing that telegraphs is a TV movie is the audio cues are really, uh, really rough. Um, they're like very wacky uh, at times. But um, I don't have a problem with that. I actually really like that. And uh, I don't agree with the 95% shit, 5% good comment. I would say that uh, I would be closer to 100% good. I, I, I dug this. I would watch it again. Like you said, this feels like a comfort movie. Um, where it's just like, yeah, this is, I could watch movies like this all the time. It's kind of like a police procedural TV yeah. show, like, like law and order criminal intent. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen Goran and oh. Eames go up against the black widow woman. Oh, what if we did a law and order that was a, a monster of the week, like law and order supernatural intent where it's all. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. I would love that show, but it's shot all just like Law and Order. It has the sound, same sound cues. It has like, if Munch was still alive, he'd be on it. Do you know what I mean? It's just like Law and Order, but it's a monster. I think that this is a money maker. Get <laughs> Wolf on the phone. Tracy brought up the skeleton with the goofy eyes. I forgot yeah. about that. I wanted to talk about that. Yeah. God. What there were so many skeletons down there. Like how many oh. people had she done this to? Yeah. I mean, she's been a spider for quite some time. So yeah. I mean, the guy, she, I, my favorite part that you brought up in the beginning is when that car was broken down 
And there were two guys, and the guy's like, I'll help you. And she's like, not you, him. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine that? Oh. And then five minutes later, the guy's dead. Fifteen minutes yeah. later, um, Anthony Franciozo is still sitting in the bar, like, laughing with his friend, saying, hey, isn't this some shit? We can't leave here. Like, your friend just got murdered out in the parking lot after he was sitting with you all night. You think, uh, I love that they were like, how did this get cast? Like, they're like, talk to Sid Caesar, and they're like, hey, you want to do like a little five-minute bit where you fight Roz Kelly about a, about a, how, how cold an office is? And then like, and uh, also there'll be prostitutes outside that are friends with Anthony Franco. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's, yeah, kept, I'll do it. You kept some people working, you know. Yeah. How about that uh, original pot belly and the Tower Records that were right next to his uh, his place? Mm. That was pretty cool. Uh, man, I could right you imagine the Angel working? Hookers? Oh, could you imagine being across the street from a Tower Records? I'd be over there all the time. In those days, I would have. Oh. You wouldn't be able to pull me out of there. Yeah. Yeah. And I like how he just threw a quarter at the girl. He's like, here you go. And like, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Mike said since he's must have been fulfilling a contractual obligation to the network for one more movie. Yeah. I like, think somebody who liked Sid Caesar was like, we got to find Sid a job. And yeah. Boom. Curse of the Black Widow. He needed to get his SAG card for another year. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, okay. But he's. He's got like, well, yeah, this is what two scenes in it, you said, right? Yeah, I did. I thought it was only one, but there were yeah. actually two. Yeah. A large supporting role for Sid Caesar. He's kind of like a, a major American star in an Italian movie that just shows up for a scene. Do you know what I mean? He's like, and like, I would put him high up on the poster. Because you know, there's people that are like, how huh, good? No, you go. To say, you know, there's people that loved your show, shows, and I'm like, since Caesar's in this, we'll watch it. And they're like, oh, we were hoping it'd be a fun comedy. And it's a movie about a girl with, with a uh, <laughs> black widow symbol in her stomach. And she turns into a spider and eats people. Not the movie we were expecting. It kind of goes like this. <laughs> He's uh, kind of, um, um, how should we say? He looked a little um, like Elijah Cook Jr. <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> He yeah. was a little spacey, a, l- a little uh, scary, said yeah. Caesar. But hey, they got him in a part. Hardball Haggerty had a little part. Everybody, a lot of good <sighs> actors in it in a lot of different places. Hardboiled Haggerty was dreamy in this yeah. movie. Oh my God. Yeah, he was. You got to see the big brawl because he's wearing like a wrestling outfit with a cape. And he has like a, like a, a lot of scenes where he kisses guys. Uh, like I've seen the pictures of him yeah. from that movie. I yeah. googled him. You know what's funny is that'll be on the site tomorrow. And like I had always, because it's Jackie Chan's first U.S. movie, and I'd always been led to believe it's horrible. It's not great, but it's way better than most people. It's not a Jackie Chan movie though. It's like an American fight movie, and then all of a sudden he's in it. Do you know what I mean? So it's not as good and as Christine DeBell is in it. Yeah, she sure is. Uh, she they their chemistry is non-existent <laughs> like at the end when he rescues her she kisses him on the cheek like that's supposed to be his wife um or a fiance but anyways it's fun it's got some cool people in it i dug it but um there's a lot of wrestlers in it ox baker who we spoke about before he's also in it for a little bit harbold haggerty's in it gene labelle there's like there's a scene with like 1200 extras at the end where every like the entire town is fighting it's pretty awesome uh and the fight scenes are good but like you know jackie chan didn't get the chore- do choreography on it but it's still a fun movie but yeah he looks a lot like the guy who gets killed by the plane propeller in raiders of the lost ark uh who is in a ton of movies uh he's also in willow he plays the skull faced guy and will the leader of the bad guys in willow that's the same actor he's also a pro wrestler um i'm looking up his name now he's a british he was a british pro wrestler um ooh, i could only remember his name if only i had a magical box that told me what people's names were anyway we'll talk about it later but uh i uh i love this i'm so glad that you picked it though because this is a really fun movie and i i don't know why it took me so long to watch it Pat I Roach, I that's the guy's name about i'm thinking of 
Pat what? Roach is Pat Roach is the guy who plays the mechanic in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh that gets uh destroyed by the flying wing. And he's also the bad guy in Willow. He's also uh the the monster in Conan the Destroyer. He's in a lot of stuff. But he looks a lot like Harbold Haggerty, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I was always a big fan of that guy too. Mm. I forget what I was going to say. Something about Roz Kelly. Her outfits oh, a co- are... A couple though. of times she was saying something and um, we remarked about how much she sounds like Uncle Spooky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have are you, you guys given ready? any thought to what's going to happen if this thing turns up? <laughs> <laughs> Have they ever met? Have we ever seen them in the same place? Uncle Spooky, tell us everything you know about Roz Kelly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she was uh, kind of, I have to admit, like, um, I don't really like Roz Kelly all that much, but I like her in this movie. I like her she a lot. She doesn't bother me in this movie. I, she's really obnoxious on the Paul Lynch <laughs> Halloween episode. I think she's just right in this, because like that's kind of who she yeah. should be in this. Like, she's like, but she has a soft spot for her boss and it's like a his girl Friday kind of situation. Even though at the end it seems like he's totally making time with uh with uh Donna Mills. Oh well that's where it was going from the very beginning. You like he, she, she he's like, I'm here to eat. And I was like, he's not here to eat. He's yeah. Here for something else. Yeah. Let Jennifer go for an extended swim. Yeah. Why don't you take that little dog of yours for a roll long walk, kid? <laughs> she was she he was just shameless and no. she was a little bit um she's like i'm just not gonna think about it like yeah. every almost every adult in jennifer's life is now dead yeah except for aunt uh lee i'm not Laura gonna think about me. it until mother's day and when mother's day comes i will remember that i thought my mom was dead for a long extended period then I found out she was living in my house, and then she died again seconds after I found out yeah. the truth. So uh, that won't come back up. I won't find myself doing karaoke 40 years later with uh, in a town. That's just such a mind fuck thing to happen to her. I mean, I don't know how she could go on after that, she honestly, because like she thought her mother was dead. She finds her mother is alive. She's able to touch her. Yeah. And like, you know, embrace her. And then, and then a giant spider. Two minutes kills later. Her yeah, two minutes later, she realizes that her sister is a giant spider and her mother falls out the window to her death. She's nearly killed by the giant spider. And then the whole friggin' place burns up. You think that was insured? I mean, I hope so. And also, what therapist can handle this situation? You know what I mean? Like, this is this is a lot. If I make a sequel, oh. it would be like Fright Night 2 where where she's like, giant spiders don't exist. And he's like, they do. We fought one. She's like, no, they don't. And, no, no. <laughs> and, no. And then the spider comes back. It's remember like when Patty Duke, she starts to like have those memories come back. She's like, no, no, no. no. And she's like, don't. <laughs> that special lipstick. That's what does it. I love Valerie's makeup kit. Oh. Where she's gonna turn into Valerie, it's like when yeah. Yvonne Craig turns into Batgirl. Yeah, it's there's crazy. really not much that changes except for an outfit change, some makeup, and a wig. And there you go, Valerie. Do you, do you imagine when our hero comes back to work the next day, the prostitutes that he sees every day outside are like, "What's going on?" He's like, "Well, I fought a spider," and they're like, "What are you talking about? You didn't fight a spider." He's like, "Oh yeah, fought a spider." They're like, you always say this shit. Oh. Another another moment when prostitution was just treated as sort of like, you know, yeah, it's the prostitutes out front. Yeah. It's just like NBD. Yeah. Well, you know what? If they did a series, one of them would get killed and he would investigate it. Do you know what I mean? Or there'd be like a vampire preying on them. Like there's a story hook for a future episode. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that would have been a great episode for the show. Yeah. Yeah. They could have brought one of those hookers on and been like, this is the momentary focus of the show. And then she's going to be dead. Yeah. 
and then he has to find her. Uh, it's good, though. I, I think this would have made a good series that lasted 11 episodes, and the last two only aired in Europe and in TV movies that strung them together. Uh, is, is everything I watched in the 70s. I'm like, oh. How about how everyone lived? Everyone yeah. there in this movie had to have been wealthy. Even, I mean, well, he was a private investigator. Yeah. But he had this beautiful house. Yeah. And, uh, of course, her family was money. Oh, did you notice that in the credits they call, their last name is Lockwood. Oh. But it's not. In the movie, it's Lock Ridge. And I, yeah. I thought I was losing my mind uh, and because I noticed that. And then I saw it written on one of the gates or, or when he goes to the winery, the yeah. vineyard, and it's written on there. I'm like, see, it's Lockridge. But uh, she, they had money. Yeah. So yeah. she was living in a fabulous house, too, that that beach house. She was living oh, in. That was house like, oh, that house is beautiful. God. And they, that's not a public beach in front of her house. That's no. just, That's just for them. <laughs> You know, like when so, people go there, they call the cops right away and they're like, they have like private security take care of that beach. I bet Larry Hagman was her neighbor. Oh, that would be awesome. And I bet he came next door and offered her and Jennifer a role in Beware the Blob. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, uh, yeah, I like, I like that there's so many rich people. I just, this is what. I, Mike said it like, you know, he, he said you want to be grown up and be a Hollywood PI. This is what I thought it was going to be like when I was a grown up that I would live in places like this and have maybe not spiders, but I would meet people of this ilk uh, in my life. And and I agree with David to Anthony for, for Kirsch's line reading. He said, sounds like an exasperated dad who's really disappointed in you and is going to ground you for two weeks. Yes, he always does. We made a lot. John Waters once. John Waters once said that uh, movies were boring now because they weren't about rich people anymore. They yeah. were about real people. Yeah. And that's so true because like now movies, it's like every movie has to have a message or be important or have something to say and show real people doing real things. Not when this really one. like, you know, no, this was totally fantasy. Even when and you I go to it. like, when he went, he was like looking into that, uh, those ruins like there was graffiti everywhere that was like where did that the graffiti get there We're like yeah it's a movie fuck it that's that's what i liked about it the staircases in this movie john were just primo they just keep going up 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 and it seemed like even when she was in the third floor there was another staircase that led up to where her mother was you know your I house love that you know your house is huge when a human being can live in it and you never hear them. Do you know what I mean? Like I, like she had, she never walked around. She never took a shower. Like, she, well, she didn't live there. Oh, okay. Remember, she lived like over an hour away because she called Laura and said that oh, she was okay. going to drive up there. Oh, okay. Laura lived there because Laura knew what had happened because Laura was the spider lady. So she, <laughs> I will say that Laura that's possible. Have you ever been in someone's house and you didn't know that somebody else lived there and they just randomly show up? Because, uh, yeah, yeah, that happened to us once because a mutual acquaintance of ours, whose name rhymes with Andy, uh, we were at his house once and we didn't know his brother also lived there. And his brother just came down the steps and Noah just screamed. He was like, Who's this? <laughs> we, we thought that we were alone in the house, we were not. Terrifying. Well, apparently that never happened to Lee. Ah, uh, yeah. She was like, did, did you hear something upstairs? No. That's fine. Could you imagine being the mother oh. and just living on the third floor? It's like um, Mrs. Allerton in Burn Offerings. Yeah. Is that her name Allerton? I think so. Something this movie like has some Burn Offerings feel for me, but just because someone goes through the window. But it, it has like that kind of... Uh, that too. Yeah feel but uh i don't know i like it i now i'm really sad that this wasn't a series i have all these ideas for episodes but now i'm gonna have to pitch this it won't make it but you know i should probably just concentrate on stink bug yeah i feel sad about that and the fact that there never was a salem's lot tv oh. series you know i watched Re starring david soul and lance Kerwin. i did watch return to salem's lot this week which i'd never watched the larry cohen movie I really liked it. Um, 
if it had been called something else, I think people would love it. Um, but I think because it's not called, because it's called Salem's Lot, people are like, this isn't Salem's Lot. But uh, it's fun. And the idea that vampires came over on the Mayflower and have been in this country a long time is. Uh, <laughs> and Samuel Fuller's in it. What the fuck? He's great in it. Mm-hmm. He's so good in it. And it's like, he's like an unkillable old man. Like he gets stabbed in the leg and he just walks away and he's like, I'll be fine. Oh, so good. Uh, I I also thought at some point, like my dreams as a kid were to either be a private detective with an office like this, you know, that has your name written on the door and you have like a, a mean secretary or to be Sam Malone from Cheers. I have achieved neither of these dreams. Um, so I wanted to be a bartender, have my own bar and live above it. Never happened. So, oh, well, I still got time. I got a couple years left, you know. Your life's not over yet, Sam. Yeah, it's these dreams could still have. I could still be a private detective or a bartender. Isn't this our cheers? This you is our are cheers. him. Yeah, and I'm making drinks. This is our cheers. You're right. Oh, yeah, that's great. Our friends are here hanging out with us. Some they people ever... we've even met in person yeah. at events. So you know, and we're we are where everybody knows our name. That's good. Wow, that makes me feel good, Bill. Thank you. Oh. I'm glad though again that we watched this. I, I had a blast with it. Like uh, I'll probably go back and watch it again just because I dug it so much. Yeah, they, I I like the dialogue in this. I think it's pretty well written, even yeah. though it's it's very obvious. But yeah. it's like a it's like I said, it's like a TV show episode of um, Criminal Intent or something, where like you don't want it to be too complicated. You don't want it to be too heavy. It's just sort of like a tick-tock tick-tock thing that unwinds while you watch it <laughs> i like it i think sometimes it's predictable modern. things are okay because it's like cool then like you know what i mean like it's entertaining to me so i oh i'm norm thank you roger <laughs> who am i you are uh oh i don't know i hope that i get to be somebody good Maybe you can, can I be Shelly Long? Yeah, you can be Shelly Long. <laughs> no, I'd rather be who was the woman who was her and her nemesis? Um Carla. Oh, Carla. Yeah, Carla's great. Mike Justice says he's Carla. Oh, Mike's gonna be Carla. Mm. I think man, not to turn this into a cheers thing, but I will. Um I think it's my favorite show ever because uh it's like the storytelling engine of that show is so great because there's so many characters that you can just do an episode about that character. Do you know what I mean? And like, and there's so many little weird things like, Hey, we've never seen Norm's wife and we never will. And like Frazier can go from that show and being the bad guy to be kind of a good guy and being the butt everybody's jokes, being the hero of his own show. Like there's a lot of really cool stuff. That, there's the bar, the other bar that they fight with uptown tavern. Like there's so much stuff. Um, Carl was great on it. The, the, you know what I mean? Like her husband coming in is great. Dan Hyatt on it with him. And they would all, you know, Louis, uh, what's his name uh, from Night Court would come out. You know, he was like the magician that would come in and steal people's money. He was in it a couple of times. Like, you know, the crazy Richard. Mall? No, uh, Harry Anderson. He was in the first. Oh, season. Okay. The crazy thing is like at one point, originally Fred Dwyer was going to be Sam Malone and Sam Malone was going to be a football player. Um, which is crazy. And instead they said, well, maybe he should just do Hunter. And that worked out. Because I, I can't see anyone other than the people that are in the show being in the show. So, uh, yeah, I really dig Cheers a lot. I can't get my wife to watch it. I've tried a couple of times. I'm like, you should watch it. You're really going to like it. No. I don't ever want to watch it. I never uh, watched you know, it. Watch. It's good. I mean, I, I would see once in a while I'd turn it on and I, I always saw the same episode. Yeah. Does that happen to you too? quite often yeah there's always a show you never watch but every time you do watch it it's the same episode the one uh, that i used to always see was the one where somebody left their coat in the bar and mm-hmm. like shelly long was gonna meet this guy and date him or something and at the end of the episode um ted danson had this really funny line because she gave this tootsie-esque speech about her intentions of meeting this man and she's like i for once in my life i've just totally blanched and 
she went on and on and on. She's like, are you understanding what I'm saying? And he's like, I'm still back at the part where you changed your name to Blanche. <laughs> <laughs> that lot was really funny. Yeah, he has and, some great know. lines on that show. I don't know. I just am a big fan of it. I, it's a good show to just. I don't know. It was something I looked forward to as a kid, even though like, I didn't understand bars or, you know, what I mean any of that. But like, I just loved it. Yes, you mm-hmm. did. You wanted to go hang out in bars. You oh, had I, I did. a vision of your adult life as being in one of those uh, '70s style bars for the rest of your life. I did really. I love. My parents would take us to a bar called the Gilded Cage in Elwood, and my dad gave me the advice that I follow in restaurants for the rest of my life. My dad said to me, he said, see all these people here? They've been working in a steel mill all day. They're tired, and they don't want to hear you be stupid. Shut up. And I said, okay. And that's why I'm like super quiet. If you ever go to a restaurant with me, I rarely talk. Um, yeah. Dude, then why'd you bring me in here? Yeah. Well, no, because he's like, just be quiet. Don't be silly. Don't be loud. And I was like, okay. And I just sat there. I followed that advice my whole life, at least except on the show. But uh, otherwise, you know, just be chill. Yeah, why don't you follow it here? Yeah. Well, here, this is different. I'm I'm here to be loud and, and silly. So, uh, anyways. I'm, I'm glad you're scared. here being loud and silly. Yeah, I have fun. This is my fun time for the week. Uh, when I'm not thinking about the basement being flooded. That's this is the place to be. Don't look in the basement. Don't look in the basement. Yeah, I don't know if Whatever's anyone else down there will wait. And depending on where in the country you live, we got like forty inches of rain this week, which is like more than we got all year. Um, if you've seen pictures of Pittsburgh, like usually you see the point, which is where the three rivers come together, and there's Point State Park is there. There's the big fountain. You see it in every picture of Pittsburgh. It's totally covered. The roads are totally covered. Like it's uh. It's wild. Like this is the most flooding we've had in a long time. So uh it led my basement has been flooded as well. So uh the movies are all safe, everything's safe, but it was it was scary. Uh not scary. It was scary going down there and seeing it like that. But uh it's been a pretty wild week of uh that kind of stuff happening. The water has mostly receded, by yeah. the way. That picture of the ducks though on three seventy six is absolutely insane. It was one oh, of it's Leaf's things. favorite TV show too. Sam, cheers. Yeah, that's good. Hey, I have a secret to tell you. Yes. Listen, don't tell anyone, but Count Yorga, vampire. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Would you call him the Death Master too? You wouldn't know it to look at him, but no. he's a vampire. Yeah, he is the Death Master, but we won't say that until the sequel. Oh, okay. Because that's a cool name for a vampire. What if he was like Charles Manson, too? What if he was kind of Manson? It could happen. Yeah, I'd love it. They may have even been writing that script when Count York at Vampire was made. Yeah. Hey, you know what, though? Uh, You can... Unlike, you know, being a woman's picture, you can't come to this movie alone. Don't come alone. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be the most frightening experience of your life. So you just don't want to come alone. Yeah. I mean, honestly, bring a date. So when you piss your pants because it's the most frightening thing you've ever seen, they can be like, I pissed my pants too. And maybe you'll have a relationship out of it. My favorite part in Count Yorga Vampire is when those people are over at his mansion, I guess. Yeah. I guess it's a mansion. And they're in Count Yorga's driveway and they get stuck. So they decide to just sleep there for the night and fuck. Yeah. Yeah. In their van. It was the 60s, late 60s, early 70s, dude. It was van culture, van life. Could you imagine fucking in someone else's driveway? I couldn't. I don't know. I guess if I had that groovy 70s van and they yeah. couldn't really see in. But still, that is really pushing it. It's I used to have. I'll I come used right to out Ford, and say it. I used to have a Ford Custom van. And uh, I got busted making out with a girl in it um, because <gasps> we, were in, we were in the parking lot of a school for uh, mentally challenged kids. The, not during the day. This 
this was over the weekend at night and the uh a cop came and uh knocked on the window and oddly this is strange i was fully dressed and she wasn't so it really seemed even creepier right so he said son get out of the car so i got out of the car and like he was literally almost crying and he was like you know that there are kids with kids with with mentally retarded kids that go to school here every day they don't need you having sex in the parking lot I'm like, what? Well, I'm not having sex. We're just like making out. He's like, be it as it may. Get your clothes on. Take that girl home. I'm like, what? <laughs> I was like, oh boy. Your clothes Walmo, were Walmo on. Walmo was it? Yeah, mine were on. Because he had to ask her. He's like, is everything okay? He's not abusing you, is she? <laughs> like, no, well, I'm not be abusing her. Well, you're dressed and she isn't. <laughs> what kind of weird games do you think we're playing? You do man. have that creepy look. Oh, by the way, thank oh, you. Thank Nora. you. <laughs> thank you, Nora Wallace, for, for your donation. Yeah. We, I got that during the break. Your name yeah. will be in next week's credits. And uh, if any of you want to make a small donation to keep the show streaming services paid, um, groovydoom at gmail.com. Oh. And we'll bam, we'll put your name in the credits of the show. It's so exciting. You will scream and scream again. Also, Leif brought up that Dawn of the Dead's playing a lot of places next weekend. It's playing at a, at the Riverside, uh the what the twelfth and thirteenth, I think it's playing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh No, uh, you, whatever the Friday and Saturday is. Yeah, the Friday. But yeah, if you get a chance to see it in your area, please go see it. Wow, look at this. Rodan, Gorgo, and Ghidra. Do you think Gorgo's upset because he's the bootleg one amongst the group? Uh, I don't know. They kind of like gave him the center. Well, Gorgo's a, a female, isn't she? Oh, yeah, that's correct. Am I getting it mixed up? No, no, that's good. Um, but yeah, they put her center right there in the in the middle. So she's the centerfold. <laughs> yeah, the angel in the centerfold. No, 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 no. That was last week. The centerfold yeah. girls. I know, but I can't get past it. Neither can I. I really like that movie. Yeah. Oh, Gorgo. Well, who's wait? The the Black Widow spider in tonight's movie. That was uh, what monster was that? Was it Rodan? And Gyrus. <laughs> Is that its name? I can't remember which one's a spider. No, you said that the the voice of oh, the spider... it is the voice of Rodan. Yeah, the spider's voice when it's set on fire is Rodan. Yeah, it's kind of like the shark in Jaws. It roars mm -hmm. just like a spider would in real life. Yeah, uh, the spider in that movie I talked about last week. Uh, there's a uh, a tiger shark that purrs when it sleeps. And I'm like, well, if sharks can make the noises from Jaws, certainly they can also uh, purr when they sleep. Who hears the shark purr? You do. We as people hear it. Is it sleeps? This kid has like, that is the friend of the shark. He has like one of those like beachfront kind of uh, houses that like has like an open cut section where the shark can swim up into his bedroom and wake him up because he's, he has a mental connection to the shark. It could happen. Wild. It's wild, man. Wild. Oh. The yeah, devil's the first run hit. That Portofino logo is magical, Bill. I just want He's to tell you, though, if you're 16 and you want to go see this, you're screwed. So you got to be 18. Oh, it's, I mean, this was, you know, straight up porn. Yeah. There may have even been full frontal nudity in it. Oh man. Twelve gorgeous girls, too. I'm trying to figure out what movie this really is. Hmm. What porn opus is the devil's women? <laughs> um what one option could be. Well, it's too it's too early for that. Women of Devil's Island is the first thing that comes up. I don't think that's it, though. That looks a little too high profile. Mm. I don't know. 
Anyway, is it Orgy of the Dead? It could be. That That's what that woman is on the left, I think. Wouldn't that be exciting if this is an AKA for the Orgy of the Dead? It would be. It plays the... I'm looking, trying to see if there's any other mentions of it on one. This is exciting. Two Andy Warhol movies. These these are all from Phoenix. Mm. Uh, this is 1970, I believe. You could go yeah. see Flesh, and then you could leave that theater, go to a different one, and see Chelsea Girls. Wow. And Candy Girl, too. Oh, that's right. Look at that. Wow. I love that these have a very, both ends have a very similar look, too. It's really nice. You know, I have a friend who actually is writing a book. He's writing a monograph about Andy Warhol's film Empire. Oh, wow. Which is about eight hours of the, the Empire State Building filmed from a neighboring building. Yeah. And that's all it is. It's just one eight-hour shot. And you see the change of the, the day happening to the Empire State Building. But he actually went and watched it from start to finish. I remember people would tell us about those movies when I was a kid. And they they were like, isn't that stupid? And I was like, that's awesome. Like, that, That's crazy to get away with doing that. And and they'd be like, that's not art. I'm like, yeah, it is. Like, that's awesome. Like, I love that kind of stuff. Hey, man, you don't know what yeah. art is. Yeah. You don't know what being a friend is, man. <laughs> <laughs> I have to see that movie again. I only saw it that one time. Mark showed mm. me that movie, the, the River's Edge. I love that movie. I'm a big Crispin Glover fan, though. So. Me too. Yeah. Love him. All right. Oh. This is oh. am, this is too amazing not to share on the show. Yeah. Wow. This is the cutest cow ever. Do you like cheese from Denmark? I don't know if I've ever had it. <laughs> I want it now. Now I'm hungry for it. Sam, I only get cheese from Denmark. You hear me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Here's something I knew you'd love. This reminds me of my cocktail mixer. It does. Do you remember when they had that that stand up of this at the drive-in? You could take pictures with it. No. Yeah, they had like a stand up the second <gasps> night, the night they did it. That's amazing. Mhm. Mm I, mean, I, I all, guess all I would. Island. There's probably a picture of me with it. Yeah, I don't remember anything Blood Island related. I love they they're all the same movie basically. There's like a, a hunky scientist. There's a, a wife who is unfaithful, and there's a bunch of monsters. Like, cool. Yeah, it helps Let's if just, she's a nymphomaniac. She has to be. Yeah, and just do it. Just repeat. I'll watch it again and again. I've watched it like six times. I'm, if they made twenty, I would watch all twenty of them. Oh boy. I saw this ad when you posted it, this when you posted it the other day, and I was like, this is the most magical uh, of all. Of just it's like weird, isn't it? Yeah, because Ghost in the Invisible Bikini is frothy and fun. Mask of the Red Death is a movie that fucked me up when I saw it the first time at the drive in. Uh, also, I was almost superhumanly high, but the end of it, I was like, this is life. This is how I was too. Happens. And I'm like, this is too real. Like, it, when all the different uh colors of death came out i was like i can't handle this right now that was the first time i ever saw mask of the red death oh, i had never it's seen so it so good it's so good nicholas wrote cinematography on it that's great there was another one that that night too, the haunted palace i had never yeah. seen that either oh man it's such a good movie i love mask of the red death and it feels like a big influence on a lot of other people that, that came after you know like all the poe movies do but i i really dig it I love the sets in, in those mm -hmm. movies. And, you know, it's not like they were multi-million dollar epics like, they're, like there might be today. 
Yeah. Everything's hyper real now. And those seemed like yeah. creepy storybooks, like all oh, of those poor exactly. Poe movies. I love uh Pit and the Pendulum too. My band had a there's one of the songs that we did that it was literally the whole speech that he gives about uh his wife and all that stuff. And how she just can't. Yeah. Like how he couldn't deal with, you know, knowing that she was dead behind the wall and all that stuff. And it's like it's literally like really close to his speech in it. So uh that was one of my favorite songs. That song was like thirteen minutes of <laughs> screaming. It was a really hard song to do live. Uh but it was fun. And I was always like, oh people are really into this. I'm like if they only <laughs> AIP song. So uh yeah. When are you gonna send me more audio? I I will send it. I actually found a bunch uh the other day. So I have some new some different mixes to send you so you can use them on the show. Can we talk about Goliath and the vampires? I don't I've really never remember seen it. That. Yeah, I've never I seen saw it, but it. I love once. the title. Yeah, there aren't really vampires. I mean, I guess uh, they are. It, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's a it's a sword and sandal movie. Yeah, with Gordon Scott. Sergio Corbucci is one of the directors of it. Wow. But I don't remember stuff. anything like this happening in it. It was it was one of those movies I kept dying to see when it was on TV. Yeah, I, I really I, see it now. I loved vampires, and I was like, okay, there's a vampire movie I've never seen, and I just kept watching it and thinking, like, where are the vampires? This is a gladiator it, movie. I want to see was, vampires in Italy. It's called Machiste Control Il Vampiro, and AIP yeah. when it released it to TV, it was called The Vampire. Uh, yeah. It's part of the Young Adult Theater package. I love the name of that package, by the way. The Young Adult Theater. I love... Uh, this is one of the joys of love, is, is finding out like what movies are in a film package that got sold to TV. It gets me so excited. Oh, wow. I've never seen this either. I haven't seen this either. Wow. I want to see it now. That first run hit being all over the place is magical, by the way. The what? The way first run hit oh. is kind of like, like <laughs> kind of around there. Like that. Uh, so I love this ad. You could do this that has right like on the a, typewriter. Yeah. It's cool, though, because like this ad has a really nice design where it's leading you to the name of the theater. Like that almost like diagonal push down to it. I really like the way that this looks. Was Henri Pritchard supposed to be the director that Jennifer was working for in Valley of the Dolls? I think so, yeah. When she went to France to make her just, art movies? Art movies. Nudies. Nudies. <laughs> That's all they are. Nudies. Man. Boobies, boobies, boobies. Man, this is a good one. Oh, man. This movie, I don't know what that is. No, and that, that's a and that the flesh is hot type. That's uh, it's really close to Mistral font. That's like an old letter set font that was a rub, you know, like the how Presto Magics, you know, how they had those when you're a kid, but like rub down letters. That's actually what that type is. Like, so whoever the theater probably made this ad themselves, which is great. So that I means they it. probably made up the title too. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. But let me look up, see if I can find The Flesh is Hot. That's a great title. It makes you think that something uh, something dirty is going to happen, and maybe not. You know? There's maybe they were talking man... about the oven scene in Thanksgiving. Yeah, maybe. Did the you watch it, finally? Um, I watched some of it. Like yeah. They had chopped up scenes I found on YouTube, and I oh, just okay. watched them. Oh, I had fun with it. I liked it. Yeah, there's nothing listing the flesh is hot uh, on IMDb. So I wonder what that is. Could be anything <clears throat> at the Portofino. I was thinking maybe it was a retitle of one of those Touch of Her Flesh movies. Yeah, maybe. Curse of Her Flesh. <laughs> the scent of her flesh. Oh, what does Some of the ways they changed those titles were really oh. more bizarre than the actual title. My favorite of that era adult titles is A Taste of Honey, A Swallow of Brine. 
That's a great title. Like, what? What is that? That's There's the Thrill Kill Cult samples in that one. Yeah. Hey, here's what came in. Her holiday. Speak. She goes, yeah. I th- she's like, I may be a bitch, but I'll never be a butch. <laughs> here's what I got in the mail this week. Two movies. This is from Mill Creek. This is a documentary, The Mysteries of Bradshaw Ranch, Aliens, Portals, and the Paranormal. We are not alone in the universe, Bill. So, so you know. I can believe it. Yeah, and then this is uh, from 88 Films. This is a really beautiful cover. This is uh, Hushi Beauty of Beauties, but look how cool that artwork is. It's really nice. Ooh. Yeah. So this is a Shaw Brothers, uh, uh, no, Taiwanese movie. Uh, Le Haing Shang. Uh, it's a historical epic of the four great beauties of Chinese history. It's a war between the Chinese kingdoms in uh, 475 to 221 BC. But uh, it looks pretty exciting. So, well, 88 Films has beautiful artwork and packaging. So, that just came out. So, that's what came in the mail this week. Thank you, MVD 88 Film sent one and the others from Mill Creek. So, uh, I'll be watching those and I'll be on the site soon. Also, New episode of the podcast went up yesterday, Bill, and it is Night Killer. Um, if, are you shocked yes. uh, that Night Killer would be one of them? Uh, I haven't uh, listened to it yet. How long is it, Sam? It, 26 minutes. Okay. It's got a lot of samples and a lot about me talking about balls in it. So if that's your thing. You know, it's a good episode. I'll give you a hint for next week, too, early. Um, next I love week, it when you talk about balls. <laughs> Next week are uh, two Euro spy movies uh, that are James Bondian, but the character in, in them was created a long time before James Bond. So that's your hint. But uh, two movies that I really like next week too, and also two movies that are Austin Powers took a lot of stuff from. So if you uh, you see them, you're like, hey, this feels like Austin Powers. Yeah, it totally is. It's it's really close. So uh, yeah, I've just recorded a bunch more episodes. And uh, I'm excited. Also, uh, Jen Upton is on uh, Making Tarantino uh, podcast this week doing uh, what movie did she do? Don't, uh, Don't Go in the House. Don't Go in the House. Yeah, which I haven't listened to yet, but I'm very excited to listen to. So uh, check that out as well. It's all uh, last couple of weeks, all been Groovy Doom folks being on the show. AC Nicholas being on, you were on. Yeah. Well, that's pretty exciting. And uh, I didn't get a chance to say it yet, but uh, RIP Joe Flaherty. Uh, very sad about that i know he was older and he's been sick for a bit but uh i the more i write stuff uh the more and think about him this week the more i realize how much of my sense of humor comes from sctv and specifically joe flaherty i blow him up real good as a joe flaherty line and uh you know a lot of count floyd stuff is i think as a kid seeing him on pgh on sctv and realizing that like somebody from pittsburgh was on a show even as small as SCTV, but you know, that someone from Pittsburgh made it to it was like really eye opening to me and really cool. Where I was like, wow, like he's like, he's talking about West Mifflin and he's talking about the Keysport and he's talking about the Golden Triangle and, and all this stuff. And it was really cool for me as a kid to see that. So, uh, also like his part in Back to the, the, you know, when he shows up in the Back to the Future, like that's one of my favorite things I've ever had happen in a movie theater. So I was like, holy shit, Joe Flaherty's in this. <laughs> He has some great cameos. Like his can obviously his happy Gilmore cameo is one of the best, but like he just shows up randomly in movies and you're always happy that he's in them. And he's great on freaks and geeks too. So yeah. Speak of the devil, there's uh Philip now. Mm-hmm. How you doing? Hey Philip. So he has some other more episodes coming. He has 500 movies to get through. So, yeah, you got a long road ahead of you, Philip. Yep, <laughs> but we'll be there with you for it. We'll be there to help you out. So, uh, I'm behind on movies this week, though. I only watched a couple this week. I'm started my uh, April movie thon bill. There's a different theme every day uh, of the month. Uh, so far, we had uh, a bomb on Monday. Uh, Tuesday was Mondo movies. Wednesday was a ripoff, a foreign ripoff of an American movie. Thursday was 
a TV series turned into a movie. Friday was a movie with Michael Moriarty because it was his birthday on Friday. Um, today was a movie uh, that is on the Church of Satan film list. Tomorrow's Jackie Chan movie for Jackie Chan's birthday. And on Monday, it's a movie that has an eclipse in it. Ah, yeah. hey, yeah. What about the eclipse? How about that eclipse? Uh, my eclipse movie, to spoil it, is from Dust to Dawn 2, which has a really cool scene where they're finally beating the vampires and then an eclipse happens and the vampires get strong again. It's a really funny scene in the movie. Like, I thought that was a pretty cool idea. If you're another eclipse movie is Argento's Dark Glasses because the main character looks at an eclipse and goes blind. <laughs> she forgets there's an eclipse. How does this happen? Yeah, um, don't look at it. See, the vampires would still die. Yeah. Because if you can still get burned by looking at the sun, then it would still kill a vampire. And Roger, that's I'm behind, and I really want to see Festival of the Dead, which is the Soska sisters' new movie that's on Tubi. That is a Night of the Living Dead, uh, uh, kind of uh, inspired movie. So I read uh, Roger's uh, mini review of it. Oh wow, I'm excited on to see Facebook, it. and uh, he said it was okay. Yeah, if I'm not misquoting you, Roger. I'm like three movies behind on Tubi. So uh, there's a really good one called Paradise that just went up about two weeks ago. That's a uh, Man, I don't know how to say it. It's like a Hawaiian spaghetti western set in modern times. It's pretty good. Hmm. I had a lot of fun with that one. So, uh, but yeah. Uh, it's a real thing. It's an it's honest movie. Yeah, but I'll be catching up on stuff over this week after I'm actually going to see my parent, to see my mom tomorrow and watch the eclipse with her and my brother on Monday because my mom wants to go see it. So we're going to take her. We were going to go to Erie, but we found out that Elwood City, where I'm from, it has a 99.7% chance of seeing the eclipse from Elwood City. So we'll be, instead of getting on the road and driving somewhere, we'll be going there. So, yeah. And, you know, a lot of theories about the eclipse, which are hilarious and ridiculous. So, um, eclipse. So I was thinking, Bill, you have to, it's really wild if you think of people that were, that didn't have a way to predict it. You know what I mean? And suddenly in the middle of the day, it gets dark for four minutes. Like it had to like totally blow people's minds you know, in those times. That's why it was easier to believe in God and shit yeah. like that. Because something would oh, happen. Oh, yeah, because you're like, why is this happening? Also, why is it snowing in April? Uh, that happened to me the other day. I was outside uh, walking uh, to a restaurant with my wife, and it was like almost like hail this week. And I'm like, what is going on? Uh, but, you know, it's always wild. Pittsburgh, you get all the weather. Like one day it's 65 degrees, the next day it's 30 and snowing. The next day your basement's flooding. I mean, it could be all these things. You know what I mean? It, it could be everything. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but like tonight's I'm... WrestleMania and it was outside and it was like 28 degrees. Like, I, I have wrestled in cold weather, but like that had to be crazy for those guys, you know? Remember not to look at the eclipse without a special eclipse viewer, yeah. which is like a ghost viewer from 13 Ghosts. Yeah. Make sure that you have the special glasses and they have to have a certain number on them and all this stuff like Yeah. That. Yeah. Don't I mean What's like why why would you, why would William Castle give you something that was designed to remove the thing that you were there to see in the movie? I had Mr. Sardonicus on the site last weekend and and like I did some research. There's no one that has ever seen the other cut. The cut with Mr. Sardonicus surviving. They and didn't like, do it. Yeah, numerous people are like he didn't shoot anything for it. Like it does not exist. And he talks in his book about it, like, oh, we did it and it rarely played. I think we only played it three times. You're full of shit. You never shot shot that ever. You know what I mean? Like it's it was never shot. That's who are you gonna believe, William Castle? But you know what? I love his bullshit. Like, you know what? He like the more like him and Kroger Bab and all the flim flam guys, like David Friedman and stuff. I love those guys. Like, that's the kind of stuff I want in movies. Though I do have to say, Bill, uh, Bill's disappeared, so I'm gonna there he is. I heard from a lot of people the last omen's actually pretty decent. Oh, I read a couple of those reviews too. They're they're saying yeah. the thing about late night with the devil. Yeah, which will be on Shutter. I think April nineteenth. It's on Shutter. 
I just know I'm going to watch Late Night with the Devil. I'm like, that was a piece of shit. Everybody's been saying how, how great it is. I read a review that someone said of, uh, I think it was Joe Zasso actually, that said of, because uh, he actually sent me a message telling me it was good. He's like, it has a lot of European influence. And I'm like, uh, I, I trust him on this, but it's like, I know I'm going to be sitting there and be like, uh, but I'll remember, give it a shot. Remember the, the Baba Duck? That movie. Oh, I, I hate that movie. And so everybody was saying how scary it was. And I kept reading all these yeah. people on Facebook that were like, This is it. This is the new the, the new Exorcist, the new Jaws. It's the Baba Duck. It's terrifying. Yeah. It's a movie about a kid that can't fucking behave. That's really what it is. It's like that mom should have slapped that kid. Yeah. And that's what that movie's about. It was about it's a whole bunch about... of people that were really irritating. To me yeah and i wanted the monster to get them yeah if somebody whenever we talk about this about people telling you you need to watch a series or or a movie if someone says you got to watch this to me i'm like no i don't because i'm gonna hate it you know what i mean yeah yeah all right that's how i feel but uh yeah uh, it's exciting next week we got blackout which uh, Bill's never seen, so I'm excited. I think you're really gonna dig it. It's uh, it's got some cool stuff in it, and uh, Waxwork Two is wacky. It's waxy. Actually, I actually really like it. Yeah, I like that movie. And Beck is really excited. She's gonna have a lot of facts and uh, and stuff. So uh, that'll be cool. Bill, thanks as always for all the work you do putting the show together. Thanks to our sponsors this week for sponsoring us. That's right, Steve we Wilson and Chris Fasonic. Yeah. And someone else gave too, right? One other person. Well, Nora donated while ah. the show is going on. So um, thanks, Nora. But her name will be in the credits next week. Awesome. Well, yeah. If you And if you feel like doing it, do it. Thank you. And uh, come back next week. We'll have two movies. And we'll be off for a couple weeks. But we'll probably, maybe we'll do a little fun thing from the drive-in and send it out. You never know. We'll finally try and do that live connection from the Riverside. All right, so come back next weekend. Double feature, Saturday night, 8 p.m. You know the time, you know the place. Well then, be well, take care. We'll see you then. Under 17, not admitted without parents or guardians.